This is the all new Lincoln Corsair replacing the MKC. 2020 model year is the first year for it. Let's go quirks, perks, and arcs starting up front. I really like the way they have changed the uh, design languages and gone with this grill going forward. Very sharp, very nice, and just a nice, clean, elegant look. LEDs for everything, so you have your headlights, which are very, very nice and very, very bright. Your day runners are really cool. I'll show you a nice trick about them a little later on. Big perk for me, the turret signals are completely separate from the headlight assembly, so it's easier to be seen when you're making uh, your lane changes and whatnot, very nice. And you have your LED fog lights down at the bottom and there are some of your sensors. So yeah, good look up front. Very, very nice, very, very sharp. Well done, Lincoln, on the Corsair. Little bit of sculpture action happening in the hood on either side, so that's a nice look as well. Let's take a look at the front quarter, which is where we started from. Nice clean design, not, uh, not a lot to complain about here. Uh, I'm gonna go over to the side and show you a, a bit of a cool thing for me. It's a perk and it looks like it kind of has that floating roof, and I know Nissan's pushing that pretty hard, but you can see just with the A pillar, it's black, and then down to the rear, it's also black. So let's move up a little bit, and it just looks like the body color roof just kind of hangs and floats there, and I think that's a really, really nice look for the Corsair, and it just, it's a good looking SUV. Um, not too wild, not too conservative, it, kept, it, uh, it catches a nice happy medium. Quirk. The only places you'll see the word Corsair are up here on this side and similarly on the passenger side. So no badging on the rear, nothing on the front, just there. Nice rim design, nice plain simple. Uh, I would have liked something a little more minimalistic, like a classic five spoke, but that's just me. Got a side marker, got your LED turn signal integrated into the mirror. You have, you can't really see it here. Uh, I know Lincoln usually has, oh, there it is. Their um, cool number keypad. I've always liked that about them. So taking a look from the rear quarter, still looks pretty good. And we're gonna go back a little bit more and take a look at the rear. Uh, again, nice conservative. I like that there's no lettering or badging or anything on this specific trim. This is the reserve with a 2.0 turbo engine. So nothing on the back, just says Lincoln across the top. I love that it's an orange turn signal as opposed to red, because I think red would get flushed out a bit. Yeah, your twin tailpipes there. And overall, just a nice clean look at, or sorry, from, uh, from Lincoln. Kind of a quirk for me, uh, perk depending on who you're talking to. Usually the tailgate kind of runs a straight line down, but because the light assembly is here, they've had to do this kind of weird jaggedy edge thing. Not really jaggedy, but I guess more of a contoured edge to be able to have the tailgate come up. Um, it just did yeah, kind of quirky and I don't, I don't mind it. Uh, I don't care for this spoiler. It's pretty big. You can take a look at it here. Um, just as far as, uh, uh, uh sizing portions go, uh, sizing portions. That sounds like a meal. Anyways, uh, that's going to wrap up the outside. Uh, that's why I wanted to show you something. The washer fluid dispenser is up there and I would have rather it be in the middle. Um, because here you kind of get it on one side and it kind of shifts over and you got to use a little more than usual to get your rear window clean. Anyways, 2020 looking Corsair, that's the outside look. Uh, sorry it's a little dirty, it's snowed a ton over the past 48 hours. It's January 20th today when I'm recording, so it's clean as it's going to get. Anyways, we'll be uh, right back with an inside look, 2020 Lincoln Corsair. Cool trick with the day runners for the Corsair, when you push the unlock button, you'll see them go on in sequence, which is pretty cool from the inside to the outside. And you also get Lincoln's digital welcome mat. I'm gonna lock the car up again. And you'll see them go backwards. And the LED fog lights kind of fade out with a bit of a sharper end. Anyways, let's unlock it. Nice. And let's lock it up again. Let's lock it up again. There we go. <laughs> Good job, Lincoln. Very nice attention to detail there. Let's do the inside look at the 2020 Corsair, starting with the trunk automatic opener because, well, it's Lincoln and it's a luxury vehicle, so that's what you do. I've already put one of the seats down just to show you the 60-40 split. So I'll put your cargo figure for this here now, and I'll show you with the power switches, which are right here to get your left seat down. Push the button, down it goes, simple as that. You'll notice there's a pretty big gap, and that's because there are sliding seats in the rear. I'll show you that right now. Let's do our one-touch button to close it up. So here we are, rear seats, nice and easy to lift up. One hand will do it. So to get your seats down manually, you don't go up here. Instead, one pull, pull, one pull, and that's it. 
You get six extra inches of space with a sliding seat. So you're gonna lift the lever up, push it all the way back, and now you have even more space for your rear passengers. Armrest, no cup holders here, but you push a button and they come out just like that. Uh, a bit of an irk for me. Yes, you get available heated rear seats, but there's no climate controls back here. It's just a vent. So kind of a miss for me on that. And you get a couple of power sources down at the bottom. So let's close her up and go into the front seat. This is an irk for me. I think this is an over-engineered aspect of the vehicle. So I have the seat all the way up because I have to put the rear seats down. I sit all the way back. That's why I need a little more extra space to show you how the seats come down. But to get them back, like you gotta do this thing. And to me, there is no problem with putting it there. I don't know why Lincoln put it all the way up here. Um, you guess to get used to it if you're buying the car, but just it was a little weird when I first got it to adjust it. And I'll show you how the seats move and pretty standard stuff. And you'll notice, actually, I'm gonna put it back for a sec. Lincoln does have the option, a uh, paid option to get the 24 adjustable waist seats. They're awesome, they're very comfortable. They had them in the Continental. I think Continental, so the Lincoln Continental had it 30 ways, but uh, these seats are very, very comfortable and it's just, it's a great place to be. And uh, as far as side bolsters, or sorry, thigh bolsters go, pretty good. Thigh, uh, side bolsters, even better. Just, there's so much depth to it and it really kind of just hugs you. Very nice pattern, very nice stitching. Just all around, very, very sharp. Uh, back to the door panel. I'll show you more about that on the inside, but for now, basic controls. And I like that there's no hole through it, so you can actually use that for storage. Nice Rebel audio system cover right there, and you got a little bit of storage in there. Uh, Lincoln badging there. Sorry, it's dirty. Like, you can see just how much it's snowed, and this has been after, I think, 48 hours. Not as bad as our friends in Newfoundland, but uh, still a lot for Mississauga. So let's jump in, and let's keep going. So the first thing, sorry, I'm gonna adjust my seat again. It's a little uncomfortable. All right, to me, this is over-engineered as well. It's the light controls and it, it just, it sits in the middle all the time. So you just toggle up, toggle down. I like my lights being on every single time I drive my car, any car that is. So just, I don't like that. I can't just keep it in on and set it there. It automatically defaults to automatic. Uh, there are your fog light switches. There's your trunk release and your dimmers. So let's get to a, a bit of kind of irk, kind of quirk. This is for your uh, the seat bottom. This is for the seat back. To change your lumbar support, you got to push that button. You got to look over to the screen, and then you got to you know do your pushes to the right or to the left, depending on how much you want. And then when you're done, you can either X out from here, or you can go back here, and that'll exit out there. Not really a big fan of that. I do like the turn signals. They're nice, thin, and uh, piano black. And not really noticing a lot of fingerprints. Uh, I think most people I imagine would just kind of pull down like that or flick it up on the plastic parts as opposed to the piano black and the same holds true for the wiper stock. Perk, I love the two-tone design of the steering wheel. It's just so sharp and it looks really, really cool. Uh, you may think these are blanks, but they're not. They only activate when your cruise control is on. So I'm gonna push the cruise button and take a look at the, uh, this part of your screen. Everything shows up. I don't mind that that part's over-engineered. -engin Kind of a little cool trick and I like the way they do that. And those are your volume controls and that's um, that controls what happens in there along with that. I'm in the comm screen right now because uh, I just didn't really feel like looking at a bunch of stuff, but you get your basic information there. A little slow as far as reaction time goes, but uh, I mean, there's a look at the comm screen, just everything gets uh, out of the way. Let's go to the start stop button. Uh, a little weird for me that it's so high up, I wouldn't have minded it down there, but as part of the uh, the design, Lincoln popped it in there and there was some wood trim there and there, a little bit there. I don't mind it, not a fan of wood, but I think it suits this vehicle. <coughs> Sorry, I was trying to hold off that cough. Eight inch touchscreen, um, quick for the most part. There's a few uh, menu items I go through that are a little slower, uh, very responsive though. So whether you're going to apps or settings and let's go on a clock. So you can see it's not lightning quick, but it's still relatively quick. And it seems small, like just I'll back up a little bit from a distance, but it's uh, not as small as it seems in person versus on camera. So not bad, I like it. Uh, nice cool finish there as far as uh, the chrome and plastic and panel black, very nice. Uh, let's go back home. All right, here's an irk for me, something I just, I don't like at all. To get rid of the auto start stop, you gotta go three touches every time. So you push the middle button and then you gotta pick on or off. It always defaults to on, so you always gotta put it off. Auto hold, thankfully, we put it to off, it stays off. 
and traction control stays on until you change it. So um, let's go through that one more time. So you do one, two, three, uh, or you can use that to get out of it again. So one, two, and then three again. A little bit of an annoyance, not really the biggest fan of that. I don't know if this is on purpose or not, but take a look at this one. This is the front vent and it goes up quite a bit. You can see up, down. This one barely moves, all right? So the air doesn't really flow high or low. It kind of just sits in the middle. A little peculiar for me, but eh, whatever. Uh, here are your parking buttons, active park assist to navigate to parking, parking aid sensors. And the bottom one is your camera view. This is spec with the 360 top-down camera, as well as the rear view camera. Rear view camera is mandatory, but I like that. I think it's pretty cool. Here's an irk for me. I know Lincoln's trying to create a lot of space and they used to have a column gear shifter right there on some of the older models. But this to me just looks unfinished because there's a small little gap here and there's a really big gap here. Um, yes, the park button's bigger and it's not quite textured. It's weird because that's not textured, that's textured. That's not textured, that's textured. I don't know why anyone would want to put their car in gear based off feel as opposed to sight. Um, but to me, like that's a missed opportunity for space, missed opportunity for space. And to me, that ties into the HVAC system. The HVAC system's nice, does everything you need it to. You get your uh, heat controls there, heated seats, optional cooled seats, uh, steering wheel heater, a heated steering wheel, whatever. My irk is if you wanna change the direction of the air, you're gonna push that once, nothing happens. You gotta go up here, look at the screen, pick if you want it to be windshield, face or feet. So let's go for those two. And then you gotta X out of it again. And I wish that this could have just been a three touch button where it's something, whether it shows up here or not, or just, there's a better way to do it. And I don't like that I've gotta go one, two, three to get that, or one, uh, two, and then three. Um, it just seems like it's overly complicated, overly engineered, kind of like the auto start stop on off. I'm just gonna set up one more time for my feet and that's good for there, let's get rid of that. Another bit of an irk for me, uh, and not a bit, it actually is an irk. So to get your fan speed up, you're gonna turn the menu and that's gonna go to whatever you want. Here's the problem. Let's say I'm on four and I want it to go off. Uh, can we get them both in? Yeah, so you're gonna go all the way, but it stops at one. Like I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm turning. I'll back up a bit. You can't go past one, so you gotta hit menu. And then you have to go here to knock it off manually. And then you gotta X out. So it's a lot of excess three touch buttons. So let's do that again. Let's turn the volume, the temperature up or the fan speed up. It's on four. If I want it off, I'm gonna have to press menu, go up here, press off and off. And it's just a bit of a, again, eh, I don't like it. Um, they could have put the air direction controls up here or here or something. They could have done it better, I think. Still a good system, just a little excess as far as button touching goes. Uh, cool little, uh, not quite engraving, but the Lincoln logo is there, it's nice. And, uh, I'll show you a cool thing here, I, I like this. Um, you have a whole lot of space in here and you got your power, point, power points. Push back and that closes up to hide a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna open it up. This little spot here is for your cell phone, it's angled back. I'm not a big fan of texting and driving or looking at your phone and driving, so having it here in your line of sight when you look, so not in your line of sight, like within the, I guess your peripheral vision, you gotta look down here. You're on the road, you're driving, 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 see something out of, corner, out of the corner of your eye and put your head down here to take a look at your phone. Just put the phone away. There is no need to text and drive. There's Android Auto, there's Apple CarPlay that comes standard with this, there's voice controls. You don't need to look at your phone, rant over. Anyways, moving on from my little rant, uh, you get your drive modes and they are as follows. You got normal, you have your slippery, cool little graphic when it first starts up. Uh, sorry, slippery again, and deep conditions and the wheel turns a little bit. So it's kind of cool. What's weird for me is that I'm scrolling, 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 and nothing happens. It stops at deep conditions. It doesn't scroll around to the beginning, which is Excite. I'll show you Excite again, the little graphic. Not bad. Uh, and you got your Conserve, which is your Eco. And I don't think they should have called Normal Normal. I think they should have, should have called it balanced because Lincoln's a luxury model and nothing's normal about this car in a good way, not in a bad way, which I think they could have, should have used different uh, different language for that. Uh, here's a cool quirk. Uh, voice controls are on the steering wheel, but it's on the, what is that, 10 o'clock? So if you're driving, you just push that and... 
extra stuff there, but I keep quiet and cancel it. Uh, interestingly, all the chimes were created by the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. So hats off to you and Lincoln for that. Very, very nice. Uh, you can get the optional massive panoramic sunroof. I'm gonna open that. And as I talk about that, I'm just gonna show you what the rear looks like. Uh, not bad, seats are comfortable back there. Uh, so it stops halfway and you gotta do another quick little push uh, to get the rest of the panoramic uh, sunshade open. And the sunroof portion that moves is actually pretty massive and pretty great. So well done there, Lincoln. Uh, we've done this, we've done this, cup holders. Uh, things illuminate only when the lights are on. So we go back here and push it on and you can see that it's blue. And I'm gonna show you how to change the colors on that. This one comes standard as far as ambient light, very nice. So swipe once to the left, swipe twice to the light, left, and you get to your light and you pick whatever color. So I know, let's go with red. And that changes there and there's some lights there. You can't see it because it's daytime outside, but anyways, not too bad. Uh, this is just a decorative piece, but I like how it kind of just follows the continuum uh, from left to right, very nice, and that vent moves. So. 2.0 turbo engine comes standard, 250 horse, 280 pound-feet of torque. You have the option for the 2.3 turbo engine, and that gives you 295 horse and 310 pound-feet of torque. Eight-speed transmission, inline four. So you get the reserve with two or 2.3, you get the standard with two or 2.3. So I'm happy they only have two trims because the less trim is for me, the better. Uh, you got a couple of engine choices. I have the 2.0 in this specific tester. And it goes pretty quick. There's no real lag in it. And I don't, or I didn't notice any kind of issues in getting up to highway speeds. I imagine the 2.3 just has that exclamation point added to it. But uh, if I were to pick up a Corsair, I would run with this engine. And another reason I'll tell you why I would pick this engine is the fuel consumption is pretty much identical. I'll put the fuel figures up on the screen right now for you to take a look. And you can see just how similar they are between the two and 2.3, so not too bad. Um, driving, feel, and dynamics, the cabin is very quiet. It is very nice, it is very quiet. It's a very serene place to be. And I'm happy Lincoln took more attention to that than completely um, spending more attention to the outside. Yes, the outside looks good and it's refined, but it's the inside where you spend all your time that's really gonna make the Corsair stand out uh, over the outgoing MKC. Handling, not too bad for a taller car, for an SUV. Uh, it's pretty quick, as I mentioned, for a 2.0 turbo versus a 2.3. Um, I didn't notice any issues. Um, foot down, off you go, very little oversteer, very little understeer. Um, and I drove it in the snow as well, so um, all-wheel drive comes standard for all trims. Well, I guess all two trims, uh, but all trims. Uh, the dashboard is, it's, it's plain and it's simple, and I like that it's not jammed full of, of graphics and bombarding you with information. Lincoln's gone the very minimalist route here, and I think it works well for the Corsair. And, it's kind of like the whole wolf in sheep's clothing thing, I guess, for lack of better analogy. It, it's very calm, very serene, very minimalist in here, but there's a lot of technology and there's a lot going on. You know, despite the, the, some of the irks that I had about um, the few extra touches for buttons, it's a really, really nice vehicle overall. Uh, steering wheel feels nice, uh, very, very firm, very, very solid. Uh, seating position um, is great. And the seats are so comfortable. Um, Lincoln's always had pretty good seats, but with the Corsair, they've really taken it up that much more and given you a very, very comfortable place, whether you're stuck in traffic in urban areas or whether you're doing longer road trips. Um, this, these seats in the Corsair are one of my favorite sets of seats. Interestingly, you didn't notice a wireless charger and they have one. I'll do a little B-roll cutaway. So, it kind of contradicts the, we'll put a little spot for your phone so you can look at it, or have access to it in the front little cubby thing, but if you want to wirelessly charge it, you got to dump it into the middle console where you can't see it. So as far as options, I would get the panoramic sunroof because it's, I love sunroofs, I love the light, I love that it's covering pretty much uh, tip to toe. Uh, I like that Lincoln went away from the black on black interior, just everybody does it, it's so overdone. And this just adds a bit of flair to it and it just makes it look 
more premium and more upscale. So good job on Lincoln for that and um, kind of thinking outside of the box. And I know Lincoln wants to bring down their average age of consumer. And I think this could be a good way to do it. There's lots of tech here, uh, lots of cool features, um, lots of contrast on the inside. And I hope it works for them. They've been trying very, very hard. Uh, the aviator is new, the navigator is new, and they're getting rid of the alphabet soup nonsense. I think it's just the MKZ, MKZ, sorry, Canadian, uh, that remains. And I don't know if they're going to flip the name on that. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, that's going to wrap up the review. And if you have any questions on the 2020 Lincoln Corsair, let me know. Uh, one thing I didn't touch on, but I will right now, are the safety features. I will put a list of the standard features on that side of the screen. Uh, I would opt for the 360 okay. camera. Blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert, high beam assist, lane keep assist system, reverse sensing system. Um, those are your standard features. The uh, wireless charger is optional, uh, as well as the 24 way seats, which I mentioned in an early part of the video. Anyways, uh, that's going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the support as I lean out of the sun. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please, I would appreciate it. And feel free to uh, hit that notification bell to be alerted to uh, whenever a new video comes up. Again, thank you for the support and for watching. And I will be back sooner than later with my next car review.